Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week, uh, we're going to talk about something that we get asked pretty much every day here. The uh, difference between air oil separators and catch cans. And I guess we should start with what each one of those does. Sure. So uh, an air oil separator and a catch can, they basically serve the same function, which is to uh, they basically put into a line of the PCV system, of the crankcase ventilation system, and they capture any oil vapor that might be moving through the PCV system so that it doesn't uh, get sent into the engine and, and burned in the combustion chamber. Most of us just call that blow-by, like why yep. is that oil bad? Potential problems with blow-by and with, with oil getting and oil vapor getting into the uh, combustion chamber is the two big ones are one, oil and oil vapor if it gets mixed in with, with fuel uh, can lower the effective octane rating. So it can make basically Dropping the octane makes that fuel more prone to detonation, so that could cause issues in a lot of turbocharged engines. Um, the other side effect of that is it can cause carbon deposits. This is a big one on direct injected cars these days. Um, any of that oil vapor that works into the in inlet track, um, yeah, especially if it's burned in the engine, it can leave behind a lot of extra carbon. And, and those carbon deposits over time can cause some problems. So what's the difference between a catch can and an AOS? Really, again, they serve the same function. The biggest difference between an AOS and a catch can is that the AOS, the air oil separator, whatever oil is captured is returned to the oiling system of the engine. A catch can is just a can. Catch cans are generally not as complicated as the AOS systems uh, internally. So there's usually a lot more elaborate baffling in an AOS to make sure that every possible particle of oil vapor that might be moving through the PCB system is captured. Whereas a catch can usually is just a hollow can you know, in, in just a, like a, a 90 degree inlet and outlet to try and get the, the oil to deposit out of it. So I, most of the catch cans are not going to be as thorough as an aerial separator would be. Okay, so they save, serve mostly the same purpose. What problem do they solve? Sure, so, so the PCV system is there to deal with crankcase ventilation. It's positive crankcase ventilation system. When, when that system breaks down is when crankcase pressure goes positive. We, we've actually done a whole video on, on crankcase pressure and what it can tell you. Once, once the crankcase pressure goes into the positive realm, then that's when oil can start moving through the PCV system, and, and that's when the need for a catch can or an air oil separator comes up. So what would cause positive crankcase pressure? Many things can cause positive crankcase pressure. It's, it's, kind, it, it's complicated to look at all of the causes, but generally speaking, the, the most common ones are uh, running high boost, high power, um, long duration spent at wide open throttle, um, an engine build like say say with forged pistons where you have loose ring gaps or, or looser piston wall tolerances where there's there's uh, it's, it's easier for the combustion gas to leak into the crankcase that can cause a positive crankcase pressure and also just as an engine ages if you have a lot of miles on an engine and the rings uh, are not sealing as well on the cylinder as they did when the car was brand new that that lack of seal can let more combustion gas into the crankcase and, and cause positive pressure as well. Okay, so there's a lot of people who talk about Subarus. Every Subaru needs to have an AOS on it. Um, they should have come with one from the factory. How do you know when you need one? Well, as an asterisk, they did come with one from the factory. Uh, there is basically a small aero separator on the back like EJ series engines, the FA20s, um, do have something that Subaru calls an aero separator on the back. The, the best judge as far as whether or not you need one is how much oil are you, you're using in a given period. Generally, for most of us, it'd be an oil change interval, um, say 3,000 miles. Um, if you're not using any oil between oil changes, um, that's a pretty good indicator that the stock system is sufficient and the need for a catch can or an aero separator is going to be pretty, pretty minimal. If you modify the car or, or depending on whatever you're doing with the car, type of driving, etc., you notice that you're having to add maybe a half a quart or a quart of oil between oil changes or maybe between, you know, like over the course of a track day, say. Then that's where something like an aero separator catch can would make sense because you don't want to, you don't want to move that half a quart or a quart of oil through the PCV system. So let's say I am burning a significant amount of oil. How do I know which one I need? It's a tough question and that's I think why this comes up so often. Um, it really all comes down to volume. 
And, and I guess to be fair, if you're willing to empty a catch can and how often. If Again, if you're using just a little bit of oil, something where you know, like an eighth of a quart or just a, just a, just a little bit where over the course of you know a track day or, or oil change interval, there's just going to be a little bit in the bottom of the catch can so you can maybe just empty the catch can when you change your oil. The catch can's probably going to be sufficient, um, you know, because that's not really, that's not too much to deal with. Um, if you're moving a, a larger volume or especially volume that would fill up a catch can, filling up a catch can is kind of your worst case scenario because it's, it's a key part uh, of the system that ventilates that crankcase pressure. If the catch can fills up, now that, that liquid is blocking off that vent and so then bad things can happen and usually a, a large amount of oil will start working its way through the PCV system again because the catch can is full. Um, so if, that, if you're in a scenario like that or like say you have a very highly modified car where say in a 20 minute track session you would maybe be moving a quart of oil through the PCV system, something like the air oil separator where that oil as it's captured is going to be put right back into the oiling system like basically continuously would be a better bet than, than a catch can. If I have to empty out the catch can every time I do an oil change, I mean, it sounds to me like the AOS is a better solution because it's kind of a set it and forget it. I, I would agree with that and I, I, I think that's why most people these days are gravitating towards air oil separators. I would say it is for the most part a set it and forget it, but I'd say that there's a big asterisk to that which is you still have to kind of keep an eye on it and check in on it from time to time. And as we drive our cars, as it goes through lots and lots of heat cycles and the engine and vibration and all that sort of thing, most of these are using rubber hoses. Those rubber hoses can get soft, they can move around. I'll use myself as an example. So I, if you've watched some of the videos we've done, I had a radium air oil separator on my car. After a couple of years, basically the drain hose got soft and, and, and it got pulled and moved with the engine vibration underneath uh, the intercooler hose and it got pinched off. Um, I started noting, noticing some issues. The, the biggest one is crankcase pressure started to really go up. Uh, but in, in investigating and finally found that basically my drain hose had been folded over and, and wasn't doing anything. So then I had a, a set of problems to deal with because, you know, it worked really well for a while, but then as it aged, you know, things shifted and, and that, that hose kind of failed. And so then I had to go in and, and deal with that. So it, it's something where for the most part, yes, it's set and forget it, but not always and not all the time. The other, the other big one is um, you always, with an aero separator, want to monitor the the vent hose going into um, going into the, the engine because you can run into circum certain certain circumstances where oil will come out of the top of the AOS still. So you want to see if you're running into that, and if you are, then you want to go in and address it. Well, thanks everybody for tuning into the question of the week. Remember, we do these every week, and you can submit your questions via the comments below or through our messages on Instagram. Yeah. Thanks very much for watching, and as always, stay tuned.